Now let's take a look at the typical LNG fuel system following the flow of natural gas from the tank through the system components to the engine. The system includes the LNG tank and on most heavy vehicles there may be multiple tanks. Typically LNG tanks are mounted on a truck's side rail similarly to the way diesel tanks are mounted. In transit bus applications they are usually found on the vehicle's roof. These highly insulated stainless steel tanks store LNG fuel. Multiple tanks are configured to operate in parallel. The operator doesn't have to fill them separately or select which tank is being used to fill the engine. Instead, the system has a single fuel fill connection and a single vent to station connection. Other components of the system include interconnecting tubing and hoses, a heat exchanger, sometimes called a vaporizer, and several fuel control devices such as the automatic fuel shutoff valve, overpressure regulator, and pressure control regulator. There's also a fuel gauge that displays the fuel level to the driver and a low temperature light that warns the driver of abnormal system operation. Agility's standard LNG systems do not include a fuel pump. Instead, the tank pressure is used to feed fuel to the engine. No additional pressure boost is needed. When using blue fuel, however, Agility's optional cold fuel pressure builder is used to boost system pressure to provide the engine with adequate fuel. Even though the tank is very well insulated, a small amount of heat is always flowing into the tank from the outside, so pressure will gradually rise at a rate of approximately 10 to 15 psi per day, which is equivalent to about 3 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit per day. A series of regulators and valves manage the pressure in the tank so that it never exceeds 230 psi, and the pressure delivered to the engine never exceeds 150 psi. Now we'll show you how these regulators, valves, and associated parts work together to manage tank pressure and feed a constant flow of gas to the engine. Let's begin with the tank itself. There are actually two tanks, one inside the other. The inner tank is wrapped with multiple layers of insulation, and the space between the tanks is vacuum sealed, much like a thermos. This cap on the outside of the tank is called the evacuation port cap and must be kept in place to prevent damage to the vacuum seal. If the cap is missing or damaged, contact Agility Fuel Systems product support or an authorized dealer for instructions. Tanks are filled with LNG at the station through the fill receptacle. The LNG fuel fill receptacle is a pressurized connection and requires a positive lock with the station nozzle for fuel to flow. Agility LNG systems are designed to fill as quickly as possible, achieving a fill rate as fast or faster than conventional diesel fuel systems. The fill check valve prevents the tank contents from escaping in case of an accident or fill coupler failure. Note that if your vehicle has two or more LNG tanks, there will only be one fill receptacle and one vent connection back to the station. The tanks are connected and normally operate in parallel. Inside the main tank, a eulage tank is integrated to guard against overfilling and allow for fuel expansion and standby time. The pressure control regulator manages the flow of fuel from the tank when the vehicle is in operation. It supplies vapor when the tank pressure is above 120 psi or liquid when the pressure is below 120 psi. As vapor is withdrawn from the tank, tank pressure is reduced. When liquid is withdrawn, pressure is maintained. Remember, as the tank warms over time, the tank pressure will slowly increase. By allowing vapor to be withdrawn from the tank, the pressure control regulator keeps tank pressure from getting too high. The inline check valve creates a small 2 psi back pressure when liquid fuel is being withdrawn. Restricting liquid flow this way helps the pressure control regulator work more effectively to rapidly reduce tank pressure. At the outlet of the tank, the excess flow valve protects against catastrophic failure downstream. The red-handled fuel shutoff valve on each tank allows the tank to be isolated for service but is left open during operation. There's also a gray-handled vent valve this allows excess vapor to be returned to the station during fueling and is otherwise normally closed. 
When liquid fuel is being drawn from the tank, a heat exchanger is used to vaporize it into the gaseous form required by the engine. The heat exchanger circulates hot coolant from the engine to warm the LNG. LNG systems have an automatic shutoff valve. Only when the key switch is turned on will fuel flow to the engine for operation. The pressure of the gas exiting the heat exchanger going to the engine is limited by the overpressure regulator not to exceed 150 PSI. A capacitance liquid level sensor is located inside the tank as you see here. It sends a signal to an electronic control unit which in turn drives the vehicle's OEM fuel level gauge. Each tank has its own mechanical gauge to indicate the pressure inside. Often there are two pressure gauges located at the rear of the tank. Note that these gauges only show the pressure, not the amount of LNG in the tank. The primary and secondary relief valves protect the tank from excess pressure. The primary valve activates at 230 PSI and the escaping vapor is vented safely. The secondary valve is capped and activates at 350 PSI. If you ever see the red secondary relief valve cap missing, you must consider the fuel system unsafe and take appropriate action as described in segment seven, pressure relief valves. Gas at between 100 and 150 PSI at coolant temperature leaves the overpressure regulator and goes to the engine low pressure filter, which is not part of the agility system. Back on an actual rig, a hose from the low pressure filter routes gas to the engine. At the engine, an internal regulator further reduces the gas pressure. To illustrate what we've just covered, here's a little real world scenario. When a driver parks his LNG tractor on Friday night and doesn't start it again until Monday morning, this is what happens. Tank pressure when the truck was parked equaled 120 PSI, the pressure control regulator set point. The truck was parked for two days with a 15 PSI pressure rise per day. By Monday morning, the tank showed 150 PSI. Note the tank did not reach 230 PSI, so it did not vent. When the driver starts the engine Monday morning, since the tank pressure is above 120 PSI, the pressure control regulator will be open, allowing vapor flow to the engine. As the engine runs, tank pressure will decrease until it reaches 120 PSI. The pressure control regulator then closes, preventing vapor from entering the heat exchanger. The pressure control regulator will then keep the tank pressure at 120 PSI until the engine is shut off again. Now that you have a feel for the LNG system and its components, let's take a closer look at the various procedures you may perform when working with an LNG system.